Boker Tov, Rabbi, it's 9.15 and you're live. Okay, all right. Thank you very much, everybody, for joining us. Good morning. We are about to start right here in Yerushalayim. The Avot, according to the teachings of Chassidut. So please open your Mishnah or your Siddur with the Pirkei Avot to Perak Dalid, Chapter 4, Mishnah Gimel, Mishnah 3. Huaya Omer. He used to say, which basically refers to the previous Mishnah, which was Ben Azai. He was, he's the author of the previous Mishnah. Ben Azai says, Al Tehivaz Lechol Adam. Do not be shameful to any person or to every person. The altima flig lecholdavar, and do not push anything away. Shein lach adam shein lo shaa, because there is no person that does not have a time. The ein lach davar shein lo makom, and there is no object that does not have a place. Benazay over here is referring to the first Mishnah, where we learned that we need to respect every person. So there are a couple of points that this Mishnah is addressing. First of all, this Mishnah is addressing that having respect for every single person, even if there's no reason per se to respect them, also applies to an object. Not only a person, just like we say that every single person counts, Every single person is important. Every single person means a lot and has what to contribute to all of humanity. So too, every single object, every single object is precious. Hashem created everything in the world, not only human beings, but also animals and plants and objects, even animate objects. Everything has a purpose. That's point number one. Point number two is that the Mishnah Ben Azai teaches us that it's not only we should respect every person. In mitzvot, we have the mitzvot asay, the positive mitzvah. And we also have the mitzvot lotase, the prohibitive mitzvahs. So just like we had the positive idea of respecting every single person, even if we don't think that the other person is worthy of respect per se, there's also the prohibitive level, which is not to be shameful to every person. As Rabbi Ovadia of Bartonura explains, no one should ever say, ah, what could this person damage me? I have nothing to worry. Or perhaps also, what can I learn from this person? What do you mean? Everyone has space. Everyone counts. And if you see a person, you have to take them into consideration. And then you have an object, davar, an object. Do do not push anything away so as to say, oh, that's that's far. That has nothing to do with me. The example of that is I once heard. It's called the sour apple syndrome. You walk in the street and you see a beautiful apple. And it's just too high. It doesn't, of course, if, only if it's hefker, not if it's private, but if it's, it's, it's free for all, then you can't touch it. But if it's too high, even if you wanted to touch it, you couldn't reach it. So what do you say? Ah, it's a sour apple. I'm not going to enjoy it anyways. So we should never 
push anything away so as to say, oh, it doesn't count. It's not important. Every single thing that Hashem created is important. Some more, some less. But that's irrelevant. Nothing can ever be pushed away. For there is no human being that does not have their own hour. And there's no object which doesn't have space. Every object has its space. And we need to give it its space. It's worthy of the, the few inches or the few meters that the person needs. This connects to a very fundamental subject that we learned from the Holy Baal Shem Tov. In about two weeks is going to be the Baal Shem Tov's yard site. So it's very relevant to mention the Baal Shem Tov and to talk about him. The Baal Shem Tov elaborates on the concept of Hashkacha Prati. We believe that every single thing that Hashem does is calculated and is by divine providence. Every single thing that happens in this world is by divine providence. Hashem orchestrates everything. So therefore, if we find ourselves in a situation, we need to remember that there is a reason why I'm here. There is a reason why I needed to meet Mr. Shmero. There is a reason. There's a guy in front of me and not letting me go, and I might be late for my meeting. We think naturally that we are in control of everything in the world. But the more we learn Hasidut based on the teachings of the Baal Shem Tov and the Alter Rebbe and so on, we begin to internalize these subjects. Of course, the Ashgacha Pratit was here even before the Baal Shem Tov. But the Baal Shem Tov teaches it to us in a way that we should appreciate, we should internalize it. And then it's an entirely different teaching. We can live by it. We can appreciate it. It begins not to bother us anymore if things don't work out exactly the way we would like it to work. Last week, one of my children came over to me with a big smile and said, Pati, yesterday I saw Hashkacha Pratit. I saw divine providence. So I said, yes, what happened? Let me hear the story. And so the child said that they could not find their regular knapsack before they went to school. The knapsack had all the books in. And so they needed something to take the lunch to school. So they got a plastic bag, put the lunch inside, put their bottle of water, and went to school. By the time they got to school, they realized that the bottle of water was not closed totally, all the way. And it opened up and it got all the food ruined. And the child told me, if I would have had my regular knapsack, then it would have gotten all my books that were very expensive. All my books would have gotten ruined. Now taught me a beautiful lesson that children are naturally connected to Hashem. Children are pure. Children appreciate the way Hashem runs the world. And children see in every little detail, even not to get upset, Baruch Hashem, because it's something that was certainly orchestrated by Hashem. We don't always understand why Hashem runs things in certain ways. But that's irrelevant if we understand it or not. The beautiful thing is that we can appreciate how Hashem runs every single thing in our lives. There is no man, there is no person that does not have his hour, his opportunity, his space. 
ואין לך דבר שאין לו מקום. And there's no object that does not have its own place and its own purpose of why Hashem created in the world. Let's move on to Mishnah Dalit. Rabbi Levitas Ish Yavne Omer. Rabbi Levitas, that he came from Yavne, he says as follows. Ma'od, ma'od, heve shefal ruach. A person should be very, very humble. Interesting. Not a, a regular terminology that a Mishnah should say, ma'od, ma'od. Very, very. But the Zat Hashem, in the next year, we're going to delve into this subject of how important it is to be humble. Why should a person have a low spirit? In other words, to be humble. Because the hope of man is worms. In other words, a person, the, the gezerah was made that a person was born from earth and a person should return after 120 or 180, a person should return to the earth. And that's where usually their body gets eaten by worms. So what's there to be boastful about? I remember I don't know if it's appropriate to say this online, but there was someone who was very, very, very wealthy. And when he passed away, I think it was last year, it was during the Corona time, and there was barely a minion. They brought him to Israel. There was barely a minion at his funeral. And someone sent a picture in a compliment to him that it was to quote from the sixth chapter of Perkei Avot. That after a person passes away, he cannot take any wealth with him. What, what can the person take with? Ma'asim tovim, the good deeds, that stays with the person forever. And so there's no reason for a person to feel boastful if, uh, if they feel that they've accomplished a lot. Because at the end of the day, we're not accomplishing a lot for ourselves. It's all a mission of Hashem that we are trying to fulfill in this world. The next Mishnah, the next part of the Mishnah, Rabbi Yochanan ben Broka Omer, Rabbi Yochanan, the son of Broka, says, Kol hamachalel Hashem shamayim baseter, whoever desecrates the name of Hashem in a hidden, nifrayin rimenu begaloi, they'll be paid back in an obvious way. They can't say that they desecrate Hashem's name in, in, in secret, and therefore, they should also be paid back in secret. But because the desecration of Hashem's name is such a terrible sin that Hashem repays them with a punishment in a revealed way that people will find out. Or if it is intentional, when it comes to the desecration, God forbid, of Hashem's name. It's a very, very sensitive issue. You have to be super, super careful. I think it's important to mention here that when we talk about Kiddush Hashem, sanctifying Hashem's name, today, when we have such an easy finger on the button, I call it on the trigger, to post things on the internet that becomes, it to become very, 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 um, public, we have to be extra super careful to only represent Hashem in a positive sense. And no one can say, this is actually a great example. Because no one can say, oh, I'm sitting in the privacy of my own home and no one, who, who cares if, I, if I'm doing it? No one sees me. Or, or, or maybe a person thinks they can do it without being identified. Because firstly, the, the, um, the vast level 
of publicity today is more than ever before that we've experienced. So we could think that we're only writing a little thing in, in, in moments that can go to tens of thousands of people, even millions of people, depending on the methods that it's being sent around. How much more so if it has a, a person's name on it, and for sure it's even a greater chilul Hashem, desecration of Hashem's name. So we need to be extra careful. Just before we finish the shir for today, I want to mention something interesting from Rabbi Avadi of Bartanura. He says that in the beginning of the Mishnah, when it says, Ma'od, ma'od, a person should be very, very humble. So he relates to what the Rambam says. The Rambam says that when it comes to different types of midot, of, of emotion, we need to t- be, take the middle path. We shouldn't be extreme to either side. But there are certain things, even the Rambam says, that we need to do it all the way, which is a good example for the fact that extremism is not a, is not a bad word. If you're doing the right thing, then you need to do it in an extreme way if it's meant to be so. And so when it comes to being humble, Rabbi Levitas says, Ma'od, ma'od. We need to be very, very humble, which is a very important message that ego and boastfulness is something which is out of the out of the realm. Like we learned in the Talmud Sota recently, that Hashem says, anybody that has an ego, him and I cannot be in the same place. And therefore, it's important to eradicate. It's important to eradicate the whole idea of of of, uh, of gava of being boastful. Chas v'shalom, not to be boastful at all. Thank you very much. Have a wonderful day, and we look forward to seeing everybody tonight, Tuesday evening, in Jerusalem at Chabad of Rechavia, seven thirty, for an amazing lecture by Rabbi Doctor Professor Label Wolf on the subject of love. All the best. Tadarabah.